Welcome to Tiger Covenant Church. This is the day that the Lord has made. Psalms 107 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say this, Those who redeemed from the hand of the foe, those He gathered from the land, from east and west, north and south. The Bible says, Give thanks unto the Lord. Everybody say, Give thanks.
Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning that we hear your word, and as we hear your word, we respond to what thus saith the Lord. May you receive a place in our hearts, may you receive our praise and place in our hearts that which can only enable us to be true sons and daughters of God, walking by faith, walking in truth, walking under the anointing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. This is a piece of literature that's written in the form of a song and it's a parable. It's a story that's being told. And the writer of this, the writer of this fifth chapter of Isaiah has a passionate uh, love for the Lord. Because verse 1 says, I will sing for the one I love a song about his being. And so it's a story that's being written, and it's being written about a person that owns a vineyard. And as you know, the beautiful vineyards across Oregon are just wonderful. As you go into Yamhill County, we have some of the finest wineries in the world here in Oregon. And so the wine is made from grapes, and so vineyards are the place where these grapes are developed and are grown. And so here he uses a passage of scripture as a device to get the attention of the listener in that day because many people in that culture, in that time period, saw the many vines and the many vineyards that were in existence in Palestine. And so here he writes the story about an owner of a vineyard. He gets the attention because people, after they left the tabernacle and even after they left the house of God, they can walk right outside and see vineyards all around them. And there were some good vineyards. So here he's telling the story of good vineyards, and he's talking uh, about the story in such a way that he says, I'm going to sing this song, I'm going to sing this story, I'm going to sing this parable as I tell the story. And so I've entitled the sermon, Sing Unto the Lord. And as you and I come into the house of God, and as we get excited about hearing God's stories, and as we get excited about hearing God's word, sometimes a song ought to just rise up out of our soul and rise up out of our being and help us to praise the Lord even more. Everybody say amen to that. So when you come into church in subsequent Sundays in the future, use the Sunday service as an occasion. Use your private prayer room as an occasion. Use that time alone from everyone else when it's just you and God and you just start up a song and start singing. Don't worry about the fact that you might be off key, that you might be a little flat or a little sharp. Don't worry about the fact that you don't have a voice like Sister Penny. Miss Penny do a good job singing the solo this morning. Give her a hand. Clap. Penny, that was beautiful. And Sister Adrian has a beautiful voice, a beautiful voice. And others, your Sister Sandy, have anointed voices. We love to hear you sing. But don't worry about the fact that you're not gifted like that, because all of us have our gifts, and some can sing better than others. But you just use whatever you and if you sound like a bad letter, you just sing anyhow. If you sound like a honking noise, you just sing anyhow. Because one day God is going to raise you up and give you a brand new body, and you're going to sing like Lady Christ up there. Hallelujah. You're going to sing. And when God will anoint your voice, and you're able to sing in that day, oh, it's going to be a wonderful time. But in the meantime, you've got to get to another. You gotta practice. Any good musician knows that when they come into a concert hall, they don't just start singing right then and there. They get there two hours early and tune that voice up. So you and I need to do our practice and sing unto God. So when we come into church from now on on Sunday morning, I want everybody to raise a high voice unto the God. Don't worry about your camp. I want everybody to open up your mouths and sing unto God. And sometimes the beat is a little hard, and some of the beats is more than brother. Who is Charles? That's you know. Charles ain't here. Somebody go get Charles. <laughs> go get him. Some of the beats were a little hard for us to grab a hold of. But you know what? He was trying to lead us into a different beat. And then we got on that Jewish beat, and we were singing, and we were going faster and faster, and y'all were singing along with him, and that's good. And that's what I've asked him to do as our worship leader, to provide a variety of styles of music so we all can enjoy the worship of God. There you go, Charles. Give Brother Charles that hand clap for me. Sing. 
sing about them. You're not singing about any old body. You're singing about the one that you love. And if you love somebody, you will to sing a song for them. Not just a song that Earth, Wind, and Fire sang, sing a song. You sing a holy song unto God because he is mighty. Earth, Wind, and Fire couldn't do for you what God did for you. All the great song balladeers of the past couldn't do for you what God did for you. Elvis couldn't do it. All the great temptations and all those guys in the past couldn't do it. The songwriters of today, the song singers, Britney can't do it for you. But God Almighty is the only one that can save your soul. So I want to encourage you to sing unto the sing unto the Lord. And then notice, like I just said, he loved the one that he was writing about. Now, what's the passage and what's the point of this passage? Notice what happens. The vineyard is there. The owner of the vineyard does some beautiful things. Verse 2, he dug it up, cleared it of his stones, planted it with the choicest vines, built a watchtower. Cut out a wine press as well. A wine press was a vat or was a machine that was used to press grapes. And so every tool, every tool that was needed to make this vineyard successful was put in place. It was carved out, it was dug out, and this vineyard owner was not just a rich farmer, but this vineyard owner was God Almighty, and he even permitted and caused rain to grow on this vineyard. So that this vineyard would produce the best wine. And then the scripture says in the story that something strange happens. After God did all that he could do, after God took every measure, because this story is a type of who God is, after God could do everything that he could do to make this vineyard successful, the Bible says this vineyard produced that. I mean, it's almost like an oxymoron. It's almost like a contradiction. It's almost like a holy heart. It's almost like something that shouldn't be. When you love somebody, when you give your best for somebody, and all of us have had loves that have let us down. And that's when we ran the blues. All of us have had times when people have let us down. We've done the best, the most we could do for somebody, and they let us down. And God is singing the blues this morning. Because God is saying, I've done everything I could for my people. I gave them sun. I gave them shelter. I gave them good jobs. I gave you good spouses. I gave you good children. I gave you a country where you can be free. And where the creed was that all men are equal under God. I gave you a place where you can have freedom of religion. Freedom of speech. God has said, I gave America everything. But why is America? And why are the nations of the world still producing bad food? And so God looks down from heaven and says, something's got to change. I can't allow my blessing to call on America anymore. I can't allow my blessing to call on the nations of the world anymore. And so this week we saw the stock market crumble in nation after nation across the world. And God's judgment is getting ready to come. Because notice what the scripture says. This is a story. It's a picture of what God is going to do. Verse 3. Now he dwells in Jerusalem. And men of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more can I have done for you? Verse 5. Now I will tell you what I'm going to do. I will take away its head. 